Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today I want to talk about the best, the by far best strategy to use in Legend League at the moment. And this is, well it's no surprise to be honest to most of you guys I guess, but it's going to be Lalo in combination with the Super Wizard Blimp. It's Blizzard Lalo basically. So today I want to talk about how you can use it, how you can smash basically any base with this and what are the key things you, look, uh, you should look out for and especially this strategy especially is strong against those ring bases which have like a compact core. I will show that, that to you guys, I will show overall 4 attacks to you guys and I will swag overall, I think I swag, you, you will see, you will see the point which I will make. And this is kind of the insane, insane power which this strategy has. And most of the legend bases are not built against this at all. So this, you should have a really easy time to use this. And well, I think we should just jump into the first attacks, see how it works. I will explain everything to you. So you can use this strategy after the video as well and completely wreck everything in Legend League. So I think let's just not keep talking. Let's just get started with the first attack. And let's see how you guys can how you guys can use it. So this is the first base, okay? So one thing which I really like to do is starting off with taking down the town hall, especially if the pathing into the town hall is not the best for your Lalo. So if the town hall is like surrounded by a lot of defenses and the Lalo pathing into it is pretty easy, then you don't have to go for the for the for the town hall, right? But if it's like this, then you can just get, uh, just get started with the blimp, getting close to the town hall. That's kind of the goal. And at the moment, I really like to use one Lava Hound in front of it. To be honest, on this base, it might have not been the best choice because the Hound is kind of like getting distracted by this elephants at the top side. But I make it into the compartment where I wanted the blimp to go. And from this compartment, I can reach the scatter. I can reach the town hall. I can reach the, um, the clan castle building. So we can overall reach a lot of important buildings. And you can see over here now, now even the scatter is going to uh, um, get taken down. So we got already a ton of value with this one. So the next step for me is always trying to aim for enemy heroes because we have two headhunters in our army composition. That's true, yes. But if we can take down all of the other heroes, which means queen and the royal champion, king is kind of like, who cares because we're doing an air attack after that. Now what we want to do is we really want to take out those two heroes if possible because this gives us way more freedom in the Lalo. And in addition to that, we can most of the time combine this with like more scatter shots um, and other high value defenses. This is kind of the key. In addition to that, if you have like, let's say, a ton of sweepers left, maybe you want to go for those as well. Sometimes you want to go for scatters. It obviously always depends on the base, but kind of like my go-to thing is always go for the enemy heroes because as I said, it makes things normally more simple. So for us, we are using normally all of our heroes together because I really like to have this power um, together with the Royal Gem, with the King, with the Queen. And I'm always bringing two Super Warbreakers at the moment and, and I'm bringing um, one Ice Golden because I really like this really heavy Sui, which basically means um, a lot of power in your heroes and they can take out a huge part of the base. Like, take a look at this base. Already above 50% of the base is gone at this point. It's gone. Like, it's not existing anymore. Now we're just starting the Lalo at this point. We have no Eagle against us. We have no Scatters against us. We have no Sweepers really against us. We have no enemy. Like, I, there's nothing against us anymore at this point. Except a couple of single Fern Towers, which, completely honest, are completely... Like, they don't matter at this point. And you can see we still have the Warden ability, we have two Freezes, one Invisibility spell, one um, Poison and one Haste spell left. Using just the Warden ability, now just the, po uh, the Haste spell because I'm getting freaking bored otherwise, because the Loons take so long. But this base is wrecked. So we have, on this attack, we have two, we had kind of five Swag spells, but as I said, I, I just don't want to wait any longer uh, with the Haste. That's why we only, only had four. But if you guys already think this attack was crazy, Make sure to stick around because there are way more crazy attacks coming, especially on ring bases. And if any one of you guys are hating bases like this, take a look at this attack. So first off, as I said, the key is to get the blimp close to the town hall. This is what you want because those bi those bases are kind of based on having everything centered around the town hall to protect it. But what this does to you, on as an attacker, is kind of you have the freedom of how do you say? 
splash everything with the super wizards and that's what we're going to do i'm entering on the on the top side i could have entered on the left side as well but i really want to take down the royal champion i think if i'm sending the blimp on top of the royal champ it's more likely and i'm trying to open the blimp over here doing the invisibility spell doing the race spell everything so far looks good tornadoes getting triggered which we like we don't care too much about and now take a look at the bounces on top of the town hall like the town hall, or like with taking the town hall and take down nearly everything around the town hall. That's insane. Now one more invisibility spell, um, nearly taking out the other expos. But this is what, like this was just the blimp. This was just the blimp. So this attack right now is just insane because no one is building against this. Which means if you would have if you would have had gaps in the core kind of, which would have provided like this anti anti-chain value kind of the same with anti-edrex um buildings at this point he would have like this would have not went as smooth as it is but this is how it works this is how that works people are slow to adapt and people are most of the time copying bases from the top players which are at the moment not building too many bases because there are not too many tournaments going on etc etc so this attack right now is just insane the heroes are going through. Once again, we passed the 50% mark. We even passed the 60% percent mark. There is nothing left of this base anymore. Let's take a look. We still have the Lala. We still have the Lala and everything else in our pocket and can still place it. So this is just insane. Um, and I can just tell you guys, if you have any problems in Legend, try this army. It's not the easiest in the beginning, but as soon as you figure out how to place everything and so on, it's getting pretty crazy. So Lalo's going. I'm just using a couple of spells because, I mean, why not, I guess. Uh, we still have the Warden ability, which we can place. I'm using the Warden, obviously, at some point because why not? I, I can use it. Uh, same with the Freeze. And even though we used a couple of spells, we still have six Wax spells on this one. So you can see it's getting pretty crazy with this strategy. It's getting pretty crazy. So obviously, whenever something is going smooth, it looks pretty strong. But let's take a look at something when the attack is not, like the opener, for example, is not going as planned because this is always happening to strategies, right? Like Queen Charge Hybrid, Queen Charge is going wrong. Um, I don't know, like Pekka Smash, your queen is going to the wrong direction, whatever, I don't, I don't know. But let's say we have a wrong or like a bad opener. So let's see how that works. So let's, let's, let's see. So this is the next base. Once again, ring base. Like I said, ring bases right now are really popular. Um, they are quite annoying to attack and sometimes really annoying to take the down uh, to take down the town hall. But with this strategy, most of the time the town hall is pretty easy to go, especially if you go for it in the beginning. But this base already set up better because this base has most of the time the double gap in the core, um, especially the double gap in between of the town hall and the other buildings, which means the bounces on top of the town hall are not that great. So that's kind of important at this point. So once again, we're using the same technique again, hound into the blimp this makes sure that the blimp is actually making it into the core and well then we're just opening it make sure to open it not too close to the town hall otherwise the town hall explosion is going to kill your super wizards and that's not how it should work right so that's quite unfortunate otherwise now the super wizards are running out running to this uh, to the to the uh, wizard tower on the outside so i did not place my uh, my invisibility spell perfect because i wanted to place the invisibility spell that the inferno tower the multi inferno tower is not invisible anymore and this would have gave me really nice bounces but to be honest i messed this up and this is now uh well going to be tricky to come back because we took down the tunnel yes we took down the queen which is quite nice but there are still those ground expos there are still the multi inferno towers out there so that's not the easiest thing to do now, what we're doing next, I'm kind of thinking about where should I place my Royal Champion. I'm figuring out, okay, let's try to get the enemy multi-inferno tower with this Royal Champion. Let's see if that works. My Queen, I had to use her ability. I got the one multi-inferno tower, which is great. Now the Royal Champion ability, which was one of the worst timings ever, because this means we do not have the power to get the multi-inferno tower. And I'm sending in two headhunters to kill the enemy Royal Champion, which is surviving. So now this is going to be like this is really bad now so what i'm thinking right now is kind of like okay this is going to be tricky to come back from but i'm still trying so the key right now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to get everything kind of overpowering the royal champion in the end because if i would go into the royal champion the royal champion would attack like non-stop basically so this is why i'm trying to make it that the royal champion is 
kind of the last building but there are so many annoying defenses like the scatter with the sweeper and everything so it's not that easy to get into so i'm trying to haste the right side of loons to make sure that everything is going into the scatter faster we still have the warden ability which i'm using in a second there it is the warden ability was great and it's kind of providing nice coverage against the enemy royal champion but still there's a lot of things left we still have the invisibility spell which i'm using at the moment to make sure that everything kind of entering um Oh, like engaging the defenses and the royal champion cannot do anything and like i said with having the royal champion on the back end she was not able to provide the damage which was needed for the defense so we were just able to overpower it and this outcome even though the entry worked not how i planned it not even close to still worked so this attack is pretty crazy and pretty powerful as well so we have one more attack to watch we have one more attack to watch and let's see what I do over there. And I will explain one more time what I'm doing. So this is the next attack. Or the next base. And on this one, um, I'm kind of thinking about, okay, once again, I really like to go for the town hall. I feel like this is so much value. So you should always, if possible, go for the town hall. And to be honest, I really, I'm not the best Lalo attacker. So whenever the town hall is alive, I sometimes struggle to get the second star. So that's what, it's just safety measure, basically, why I go for the town hall with the super wizard blimp. So this time I'm, I chose an angle where I can enter into the ground expo compartment where I have access to the scatter, where I have access to the town hall. And this time I did not, did not really need um, a hound, for example, for tanking. So this is why I'm just raging. I'm just keep having this compartment invisible. And this is what I'm just keep go, uh, doing. I, I think the one visibility spell was a little bit late, but still it's all right. Um, the super wizards kill even the enemy, inf um, the enemy um, ice golems. Everything so far looks alright. Now the Ice Golem on my own and the Royal Champion behind because within this range, the Ice Golem is going to freeze the Single Fern Tower, which is great for my Royal Champion because this means the Royal Champion can take down the Single Fern Tower during um, which it's being frozen. And now, just once again, we already took down around about 20% of the base with the Super Wizard Blip and now my heroes are going for the back end as well. Staining in the headhunter, which was quite late. I'm kind of lucky that my royal champion was, uh, that my queen was able to reach the enemy royal champion. And now the royal champion ability to so make sure that I'm getting the the um, the sweeper out of the way. <coughs> Sorry. And now it looks really good for us. We can take down the eagle, which can take down more buildings with our uh, king and queen. And this attack is looking once again really, really solid for us. And there are no sweepers left, no really big threat to us left. There's one scatter and there's one queen. That's basically it at this point. So let's see if we can um, somehow overpower this. Once again, we're crossing the 50% mark. And, um, well, the top side, we place a couple of um, cleanup minions, but apparently there are a lot of Tessa. So we're going to start at the top side with the first Hound, kind of like flying across and soaking up as many mines and like traps as possible. This first Hound already did a great job <laughs> tanking a ton of traps. Now the Hounds, are like, now the Loons are coming behind. The next Hound is coming in. We have three hounds this time because we did not need a hound for our first tanking and we can see how like the loons are coming in and overpowering the back end it's pretty crazy and as soon as the enemy queen is kind of in a nice position i'm using the the warden ability in combination with the headhunter and this is giving us yeah the possibility to kill her and once one more time this time we have like six wax pads once again or something like that this attack is insane. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys learned something about this attack strategy. I hope you guys have some great results in Legend with this. Well, make sure to use this strategy. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow. Until then, see ya and bye-bye.